single time that we are together that we would be able to encourage each other. So let's turn our Bibles this morning um, to Revelations chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. Revelations chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. And it says like this, to, a, to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, fallen, um, repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from his place unless you repent. But this you have that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. I read it from, Revel uh, in the, from the New Kingdom's version. Let's close our eyes in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for your presence among us, O Lord of Father. Spirit of God, continue to minister unto us. O Lord of Father, we are just vessels, just like we sang. Lord, but we are just mud and clay, but you are the potter and you need to mend us and mold us and make it according to your will. Lord, we ask that you speak to our hearts. Hide us behind the cross. May your son take precedence in this place. May you be exalted. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So this morning, um, God placed in my heart and uh, when, when, when we said that we are coming, we made a quick uh, plan to come here. And we made a client, and, and I asked God, uh, and, and when, when, when the board tell, told me that I have to speak this morning, I said, Lord, speak to me, because if, I, if it doesn't speak to me first, it doesn't speak to anyone else, according to me. So it has to apply to me first before it applies to you. Um, so the, 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 the thought that came into my mind was, with all the things that is going around, there is uncertainties that is going around, right? With the pandemic, with the, with, with the elections and everything that is going on. And at that time I said that, Lord, what do, what do what we do in these circumstances? And so the title of my message this morning is a, first, a Fresh Perspective in Changing Circumstances. How do we, and then this is not a new thing that we are going to learn. This is an old thing from the scriptures because scripture cannot change, right? But we have to apply that perspective into our daily life. I believe that every church needs to have four pillars, okay, on the basis of which we can build. And they are word, worship, fellowship, and evangelism. If that, if any one of them is missing, then you know, it's like a, a three pillar uh, uh, foundation that we, we build and it will not stand. It will fall on one of those sides because it will become weak. So these four things, it should be balanced on everything. But in terms of a church with the onus on word and worship as the first two pillars, that call should come a passionate pursuit of God's presence and a following hard after God. Because that word and worship, the worship brings people. And you know, I believe that worship is the, the, the ground that is laid for the word to be spoken. And when we come in us, and I, I thank God for the worship team this morning, every song and every time we select songs, when we lift him up rather than us, that time the glory will rise up and also it will encompass each and every one of us and carry us through. Remember, the worship team, every time that you select songs, it should always lift him up. Whether it be praise or whether it be worship, it will always should be him and it should be focused on him. So, and the end goal of such a pursuit that is following hard after God is we would have a fresh perspective in changing ourselves. The word should transform us. The word should make us to be 
uh, uh, transformed into what he wants us to be. And if in every Sunday we come in and listen to word after word after word, if it doesn't transform us, there is a problem with that. We just hear, we become hearers and not doers. And that will not do anything. You know, in, in, in every day of our lives, we have so many things to do. But if God doesn't transform us, and in those things that we do, if we do not reflect the character of God, then there is no use of that pursuit that we go through. So to answer this question, and let's take a look at what a fresh encounter with God looks like in the life of prophet Isaiah. And, and, and I, I remember a post that Simjan posted a few, few days ago in regards to in the, in the, it was the year in which King Uzziah died. And he said, Isaiah was in the temple when he either had a heavenly vision or was literally taken up into heaven, where he said in chapter 6, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up. And now this, the stage is, this is around six, 740 BC, where the kingdom of Judah is where people are, Israel is doing well economically, Building projects are happening, business is booming, and people are prospering. And militarily, at that time, Israel is strong, and they are also at peace. And so, imagine, Isaiah gets up one morning, and this, I got it from someone, I'm quoting it. He's drinking his coffee, eating a bagel, and he flips on CNN, not the CNN, Canaan News Network. Just somebody made it up. And then there's breaking news. King Uzziah has died. Isaiah's mouth hung open in disbelief. King Uzziah had ruled for 52 years over Judah. He was one of the better kings of Judah. He did right in the eyes of the Lord. And Uzziah was credited with all this economic and military success Israel was joining, uh, enjoying. And now the king has died. Now if we look into, and, and, and when I read this, if we look into our lives. Think about 2020, right? In, 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 in December, probably when, 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 when the New Year service was happening, people were taking on to the promises and this would be the blessed and prosperous year. Everything is going to go smooth and this is going to be the time of how good we will be. December 31st, 2020 was the first case that was identified. And I, I'm not saying that was the first case, but that was identified in Wuhan, China. 2020 is where we have been confined to our four walls. We haven't gone anywhere. Everywhere we are stuck. You know, some, some, for some families that was joy, for some families it was not so joyful because, you know, all, all, everybody in one, you know, one room and, or one house and, you know, seeing continuously, otherwise eight hours, ten hours, we were not seeing each other. So it was okay because we go home early and then we come back in the night and then we go to sleep. And so we don't have to interact too much. But now too much interaction sometimes is good, sometimes is very bad. But in those, the, that is the circumstance we are. Nobody has died. Yes, yeah, some people have died because of the complications of the pandemic. But the, the, the situation is such that we do not know what the next day holds. The uncertainty of it. Right? In our life. After all this. And, and, and so we are, we, are, we are just happy and going on. And suddenly, last year, in June, somebody came to our house and we were sitting in prayer and said that 2020 will be the year of where God is going to take you guys to places. And then it talked about us, it talked about our daughter and everything. And my, my, my oldest two daughters are not here. The older one is in Kansas City. She's doing her residency. And the second one is with us. And the oldest one, so she is getting of age. So we are thinking, okay, she has to get married, right? This is how we are, right? First you, you're born, you're raised, you go to high school, then you go to college. And then you go to some profession and then immediately the parents said, hey, when are you going to get married? Should we start looking? Should we start looking? And she always says, then, oh, wait, 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 wait. But that waiting will end hopefully soon. That is what our prayer is. And then 
we are thinking, okay, now the COVID has come in, nothing is going to happen. Because, you know, until COVID changes, we cannot go anywhere. And lo and behold, July passed, August started, and things start to happen. Because when we keep him first, and that is what I said, we are not, we are not perfect people, we are imperfect people, we are not saviors, but God is the only one that can transform lives. But when we are in the center of his will, when our perspective changes, God is going to transform us. Even in the midst of the uh, COVID season, I'm looking at, and I, if I'm reading it correctly, God has kept each and every one of you safe. God has kept your jobs, where there is millions that have lost jobs. People who are, and, and there are five or six nurses, I believe, in this church. And in those nurses, they have worked in places where, you know, COVID can be hit hard. But God has kept you all safe. It is only, our children are going to schools, you know, this one, always wear the mask because she's afraid that somebody, some, either she might, you know, give the disease to someone or, or, or she might get it from someone. But on the other side, even in the midst of it, and I'll give you an example, two weeks ago, Two weekends ago, we were in, uh, in, in a wedding. Me, Binu, and uh, our oldest daughter were. And that, was, that became a super spreader event. The person that sat during the meeting, during the wedding, next to us, contradicted COVID. Oh, contracted, contracted. Contracted COVID. Paula, you're not going to bring that back on me, okay? Uh, they contracted uh, the disease. The groom was infected. There are 50, 30 to 50 odd people that have contracted the disease. But we were saying on the way, his protection was with us. It is all because of his mercy, not because of any of our merit. So in this, in, in this situation, when the world changes, when your foundation is rocked by the latest diagnosis or the latest cutbacks or situation beyond our control, what do we do? In that encounter, Isaiah realized his own and Israel's unworthiness and sin saying, woe is me, I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Question to each and every one of us is, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of all the circumstantial proof that things are going wrong, are we able to see him? If we are able to see him, things will always work out for good because he does everything beautiful. That doesn't mean there's those people who, who did not get through this and they were, you know, they went to be with the Lord or they went and, and died that God was not with them. I'm not saying, but that was God's timing or God's way of whatever he wanted to fulfill. But in our life, are we able to see our God seated on the throne? Are we able to see that he who is sovereign, he is doing things and orchestrating things and allowing things and perfecting things, right? Having a fresh encounter with God will do two things. It will reveal God's holiness coupled with our sinfulness. Right? And in these encounters, God calls his people to return to him. And that is what revival is. So people give definition of revival. You know, all these different. Some, for some people, it is jumping up and down is a revival. For some people, it is doing something else where a lot of people are coming to the Lord and they are not doing anything, but people are coming to the Lord. That is a revival for them. Something is happening. But somebody gave me this definition and it really matters. And it says, revival is the spirit of God using the word of God to motivate the people of God to be obedient to the will of God. Again, I say, revival is the spirit of God using the word of God to motivate the people of God to be obedient to the will of God. So when his will is fulfilled, and when we are obedient to his word, when he uses the word of God to transform us, that is true revival. 
We have fasting. I don't know how often you guys have fasting prayer, but every church has fasting prayer one weekend of the month. And my thing is, does that fasting change you? If it doesn't change you, then we are just, we should have it. I, I really believe in that, okay? Let me be very, very, we should have fasting prayer. But on the other side, if that fasting prayer is just so that we can check mark that this was done this month, then we have failed. But that should be the time that God will transform us. So when we look at the world, it seems like everything is just growing darker by the minute. Wickedness is increasing, perversions are multiplying, morals are disappearing. People are doing whatever they want, what is, whatever is right in, your, in their own eyes. But we find recipe here in the book of Revelation, as we read, as to what we can do to get transformed. Remember, Revelation was written by uh, John, and he was in the island of Patmos, nobody around there, and he is uh, seeing a vision, and he is proclaiming, and God is wanting to reveal to the seven churches in different parts of the world at that moment, and for them it was different parts of the world, and God is trying to encourage them and revive them. And there he starts which says to the angel of the church in Ephesus. A good church where things are happening. Paul, you know, went in and, 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 and set this up, but things are going wrong. Look at in our lives. It's the same thing that has happened, right? We started so strong. But if you really look back into our lives, are we still in that first situation or are we, have we gone back? little by little by little and when things get blustered and things get you know we, 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 we get comfortable we forget where we start and so in that circumstances uh, uh, the, 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 the first thing that we need to do in verse uh, 5 it says remember the height from which you have fallen the first and the foremost thing that we need to do is to remember. The reason Jesus told the Ephesian church to remember is because something he observed about this church. I, he says, I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary. You have endured quite a bit. Things are not looking good around. You know, political situations might change. The political landscape might change. But, you know, things, we are afraid. What is going to happen next? But don't get weary because if he is in control, he will guide us. You know, we, we, we are so motivated to, 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 to uh, you know, think about the circumstances and get fearful. But don't get weary because if he is in control, if we, as people of God, start to be on our knees and start praying for our children, trust me on this one. I'm saying it with full confidence because of what God has done in our lives. Our children, all three of them, went to public schools. My brother always said that. Why aren't you sending him? Because he, he had money. So he, he, wanted, he sent every one of his children to private school. And he said that, you know, well, why don't you send them to, because, you know, things, they will read more morally and they would en be encouraged by the word and all those things. But what we did, we only had this. We would hold our hands together and start praying for our kids. Even in the remote situations, when we are going through where we cannot explain it to anyone else, and you can, and she's sitting right here, and our children are sitting right here, we will sit together hold our hands and pray for our children. That is what I said. When things are dire, when we start praying for our children, God will keep our children. Remember those days when you needed something, when we didn't have all the things that we have right now, which you hold very dear. We were sharing our testimony yesterday to a couple of people, and we, we said, we remember those days when we were lacking and when I look in the fridge, these, uh, fridge and freezer these days, I sometimes are amazed how God has brought us. Because when we are remembering the goodness of God, we come back to basics. We fall on our knees and we hold our hands and we pray. 
And this is an encouragement to this church. Remember the motivation that you had when you started this church 11 years ago? Do we still have that? Or are we bothered by the work and the circumstances that we have around and also the extra things that we do that we don't have the time that we eagerly did when we wanted to do things for the kingdom in the earlier times? I'm not saying any one of you are lacking. I just, I don't know. But if we have, remember those days. Jesus tells the church that at Ephesus that they worked hard and they patiently endured suffering and they were faithful to sound doctrine. But in spite of the, all the good things, Jesus had to say to this church, he had one thing against them. They had abandoned their first love. They had abandoned the first love. What is Jesus saying? He's saying the quality of their love had weakened. One commentator says, when you lose your car keys, where are they? When you lose your sunglasses, where are they? If you think really hard about it, when you lose your car keys or your sunglasses, they're right where you left them. Honestly, it is, right? Sometimes, uh, I for one, you know, I will leave it right in front of me. And, and especially, I, I'm, as, get, as I'm getting older, I think I am losing it. You know, I have my keys in my pocket and, my ass, and, I, and I ask my children and my wife, hey, where's my keys? It's right in my pocket. It's right there. Remember the love that we have for the Lord. Remember where we are. You know, um, we, we, you may remember the encounter Jesus had with the teacher of the law. He said, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered saying, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus responds, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. That first part is very easy. Because you have not to be accountable to anybody else other than God. But that second part, love your neighbor as yourself. Remember the first love. When this church was formed, I'm not saying you are not doing it. When this church was formed, it was because there were a lot of things. And, and when, when Johnson and the board met with me and they said, you know what, I saw, I, I was tough, just like they were tough in asking me questions. They asked some. I, I commend whoever made those questions up, man, I really appreciate it. And I have forwarded it to anyone who is hiring a pastor. I added a couple more and we will talk about it later. But that is something that was needed. But I asked the tough questions too. I said, what is the vision of your church? What is the mission of your church? What do you want me to come in and do? Or what do you want our family to come in and do? And then he said, your family should be involved. Well, without them, I cannot do anything anyway. But my question is, is that vision purposeful? Is it possible? Are we working towards it? If we are not, then we are failing. You know, it's good to have the plan. We want to reach all the people around us. So I went to a, a church a few years ago for an interview. And we were just sitting in and having a conversation. They had this big, big church. They had this big building and all these things. I shared with this Johnson and um, uh, Shani yesterday. And they had this whole, whole big setup. The only time that they used their church is Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Big, huge building, two number of rooms. And I said, what do you do with this? You know, and there are engineers, doctors, teachers, and all these big, big musician people that are sitting in the church. And I asked them, what do you do? From Monday to Friday. Oh, nothing. It's just, you know, that is what we are, we have bought it for our fellowship and our prime move. I said, and then I said, there is a whole bunch of people that is in need around the church. This is right in the middle of people that are coming in as refugees and other things. I said, do you do anything for them? No, 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 no. If they come, you know, our church will be destroyed. Is that what God has called us? And that was the end of it. <laughs> they, I did not go there. And, you know, I asked, and then they asked, have you conducted funerals? And I said, I pray that I will never con have to conduct a funeral in any church. I pray that everybody will be healthy and prosperous. And if that time comes, man, we'll cross that bridge. 
Till then, we'll do whatever. For them, that was important. But the people around that are suffering was not important. Remember the first love. Remember why we are, who we are, where we started. And he is reminding, the Lord is reminding the church in Ephesus, you had the love for the people. Remember in Ephesus, he came in and preached and somebody went in into Colossia and started a church there. Paul never went there. Right? Paul started a church in Ephesus and then somebody came, Epaphras came in, found this and got the mandate, went in and started. My question is, you are living in coming, you're living in, in, in Roswell, you're living in uh, in Alpharetta, in, 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 in John's Creek, and in, in, in Marietta. There are people around you. Have they heard the gospel? Remember when you were born again and you came into the Lord, your passion for the Lord. Remember that first love. You don't have to do, don't have to do anything. Just bring your friends for a cup of coffee. Don't say anything. Show them why you are so happy. Start praying with them. God will bring them to the knowledge of the Lord. And when two or three times you bring them for coffee when you need it, just bring a couple of us there. We will sit and have a conversation. And say that this is why we love Jesus. Not because he, we want you to be converted, but because we love Jesus because he has loved us first. And when we do that, they will come to know. Remember the first love. If I keep on speaking like this, it will be too much time. I know the attention span of the people is between 30 and maximum 40, but I have already exceeded the 35. And my wife has said, please don't preach too much. Because too much preaching is not, it's in the spirit. No, no, she says in a nice way. She says, don't bore people, sir. Just like I said in the beginning, because in the next review, they're going to say that we know. Um, so the second thing, in verse chapter 2, verse 5, we said, remember the height from which you have fallen. Second thing is repent. Second thing is repent. We, for repenting, the, the, the healing of our nation is waiting on God's people to repent. We can point fingers at everyone else but us. And, 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 my, my, and, and this is used so often, but there was a, 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 a teacher, a, Sp a, Sp a Spanish principal of ours, he would say like this, when you point the finger to others, Three are pointing towards you. This is how we did it. It was in my high school. This was in India. This is not here. I'm not making fun of him. It was, that is the way it was. Such. And he made very, very, the, the other phrase that he used is, you can take a donkey to the fountain, but you cannot make the donkey to drink from the fountain. These were two phrases that kept with me. This was in high school. It's the same thing, right? When we are pointing fingers, they are not right, they are not right. Are we right? Repent of where we have fallen. I said, remember the first love. Repent where we have fallen. Where we have fallen. Repent. Because the healing of our nation depends on our healing first. And for that healing, first thing is acceptance that we have fallen. And second thing is asking God, Lord, where I have fallen, I want to confess my sin and repent of it. Repent is basically turning around, going this way, and suddenly you realize I'm going the wrong way, you make a U-turn and come back. That is return. The apostle Peter says, therefore since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, and verse 14 says, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11 and 14. God wants our holiness. And, and, and this is something that I say about my family. You know, everybody says, um, you know, you go and speak at all these places or talk to all these people. They're all happy and transformed by the gospel. It's all good. But I always said that. Before I change the world, if I am not becoming an impact in my family, I have wasted it. If my children do not want to follow the God that I am preaching, I have wasted it. 
Are we a witness in our family? Are we people that our children look and say that you are the model that we want to follow? If not, we need to repent. Repent of our sins. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, Matthew 3 verse 2. That is what John the Baptist said, right? That is what Jesus said, isn't it? Repentance was, a heart, well, repentance was at the heart of Peter's and the church's best message that saw a revival. It was repentant in Acts chapter 2. When he speaks, he tells, tells the, the people that were in that upper room and around that people were gathered and seeing these people speaking in tongues and uttering. And, they, and Peter gets up to speak and he says, repent. Are we able to repent? God is calling us to repent and be converted. And the third thing in, in Revelation chapter 2 verse 4, it says, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Basically that means you need to return. Not only that you have to remember, you can repent also, but you have to turn around and return unto him. I know it's an old message, probably you have heard this so many times, but this morning the Lord wants to speak to each and every one of us, that we come back into the first love. If we are not able to, in Hindi it says, kahan se gire? Sochi. When you come, he's able to lead us. Uh, I don't want us to be discouraged because of how bad it has become. Because God is still merciful and cares for his people. You know, through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord says, Can a woman forget a nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? And in verse 16, it says, I will never forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. God says, you are still in the palms of my hand. He is still there. He is still at the same spot. The only thing he is saying is, you remember where you have fallen. You repent of it. Come back unto me. I will take you just as you are. And transform you and make you my child and make you to be more, um, a, more of a blessing for many. I have a lot of other things that is written. I think this is more than enough for this morning. This morning, the days of the old, if we say, if that days of the old is of things that we did wrong, then we need to, you know, uh, to, to, to change. But if those days of the old was of the first love towards him, the time you wanted to spend in the word of God so many hours, and you would not be bored, spending in prayer for much of the time, and you would not be bored, and spending in fellowship with the people and to share the gospel. Anyone who you see, you wanted to share the gospel. If that first love is lost, then let's remember that and repent and return unto him. This morning, I want to challenge you this, that God has placed all of us in this place for a reason. It's not an accident. Everywhere that we have gone, you know, we were so comfortable in Chicago. That first move was the hardest. So somebody has been in this, you know, what, was it hard for you to make this decision? The first move was really hard. Very hard. Because that's the place that we knew for 18 years. We were there. I was there. She was there for 12 years. You know, 12, 13 years. And so that was hard. But... Once we understood what God has called us, then it's easier. 
don't fall into the routine of, okay, I have all these things to do, so that is why I cannot do what I used to do. You can still do it. What is the priority you give? That's what matters. Is God the priority? If God is not the priority, then let us bring that priority back. Parents, are you worried about your children going to our schools and getting, you know, getting, you know, seeing all these people doing nasty things and you are worried that our children will? Nobody will. I guarantee you, sit on your knees and start praying. When they are going to sleep, lay hands on them and start praying. Let them not know. You start praying. And saying that. But first, you need to be right because they don't want to follow something that you are not doing right. Hopefully. But they will choose to because that are the easy things to do. But when we start praying, when we come back to the basics, when they see that we have the enthusiasm of the old to do things more for the Lord, our children, more than the education. I, education is very important. In our family, that is very important. But more than the education, when we give God the priority, God will transform them and make them to be fruitful kingdom citizens. May God bless you and keep you. May, the, may his fire shine upon you. And may you continue to be growing in him, remembering the first days, repenting and returning unto him. And he will guide your path and keep you safe. God willing, right after this, and Ani and I said, I heard, gracefully has brought some food. And so we will eat. And then right after that, we will leave. It's a 12-hour drive. Yesterday night, I think I slept okay. Please pray that I would not fall asleep. And God willing, we will see, I will see you guys towards the end of the year. Until then, and, and they will see you hopefully in between, but, but totally probably in June. So continue to keep us in your prayers. God bless you, and have a wonderful, wonderful and blessed week. God bless you.